नमस्कार श्रोताओं मैं आपकी होस्ट यशस्वी गुप्ता आपका स्वागत करती हूँ जेई सी आर सी नाइनटी पॉइंट एट एफ के कार्यक्रम एक खास मुलाकात में जिसमें हम बात करते हैं कुछ नए लोगों से तो आज का आज हम आप लोगों को मिलवाने लाए हैं डॉक्टर एस पी मिश्रा सर से ये करियर काउंसलर है इंडियन कर, इंडियन करियर सेंटर पे एंड ये पेरेंटिंग पे इन्होंने फिलहाल में एक किताब लिखी है नई किताब जिसमें इन्होंने पेरेंटिंग टेक्निक्स के बारे में बताया है तो अब हम सर से कुछ जानते हैं उनके बारे में थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू योर एफएम स्टेशन जस्ट टू गिव अ ब्रीफ अबाउट माय सेल्फ आई आई एम डॉक्टर एस पी मिश्रा आई एम जॉइनिंग यू टुडे फ्रॉम हैदराबाद आई एम बेस्ड इन हैदराबाद ब्रीफ अबाउट माय सेल्फ आई बीन इन दॉर्पोरेट इन कॉर्पोरेट फॉर अबाउट ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स ट्वेंटी टू एंड हाफ ईयर्स इन द construction equipment industry i worked with a couple of multinational companies uh, first started with a german multinational and later on with a uh, british multinational company um, in mid of 2021 i uh, after finishing the corporate uh, jobs i started my own my own and started my own business and uh, one of the primary business is into the career guidance piece uh, so i am a certified career guidance uh, mentor um, i am also into overseas education consulting and uh, i am also a co-founder in one of the tech t- startup uh, it's called oneserp which is basically a exchange platform for uh, used equipment since i am from the construction equipment field Uh, so mm-hmm. that's one more startup which is so i'm currently involved in three different uh, areas of business and one of them is uh, the career guidance and as the shv mentioned uh, very recently i uh, released my book uh, the book title of the book is what they don't teach in school and it is now available online on amazon and uh, flipkart and other platforms and also available on kindle so that's briefly okay. about me so okay. sir so should i start with the questions yeah you can yes okay so sir firstly i would like to know like you told that you work with three different types of business fields so how do you manage your day work day with three different fields and three different workplaces uh fortunately in today's times the work is all uh, on a virtual space uh, in fact everything actually now happens uh, through the laptop and the phone and uh, things like that uh, of course whenever there is a requirement i do travel to meet uh, customers uh, parents or students or even to different campuses as and when it is required but by and large my day to day activity everything is done over uh, virtual mode i don't don't have to travel to a specific office of course we do have offices all across india uh, but um, the travel is only when there is a specific requirement otherwise i operate from home itself okay sir so sir what do you perceive as your greatest professional asset well i think uh, when it comes to my 22 and 1/2 years in the construction equipment field uh, with uh, two multinational companies uh, uh, wh- amongst a lot of other things what is the best um, thing which, which is the greater t- asset i would say for me is the ability to travel across the length and breadth of india um, i was okay. fortunate to work all across india in fact all the four corners of india um, i've traveled uh, to more than 100 plus uh, towns and cities across india and about 25 different cities across the world and uh, amongst all other things i think the ability to travel because of the work uh, and meet different people and uh, know learn about different cultures language food and things like that and being able to adapt to different situations uh, that has been the greatest asset uh, which i can say from my professional career so like you travel to many of the places throughout the world and even in india so what was the basic differences you found between india and the world cities i think the first and foremost uh, uh, glaring difference what you come to know 
is that if you travel to uh, some some of the developed country like united kingdom or germany or or yes. uh, uh, some of these countries you will immediately realize that in term, in terms of infrastructure they are far ahead uh, in terms of following processes following systems uh, they are far ahead of uh, us even today of course uh, in india of course there are also a lot of development which is happening we are also moving towards that uh, but yes. overall that is a striking difference uh, what one can visually make out the moment you go to any developed nation and uh, to a large extent also you will find that they are neat uh, very clean uh, you don't find dirt on the on the roads you don't find uh, any stray dog or cow traveling around on the road uh, well, which i think most of the indian big cities have now uh, been able to achieve but we still are in the progress i think uh, that is a striking difference which i find uh, when i travel across to other cities around the world so sir like i would like to know don't you think like those traveling cows on road and stray dogs are the essence of indians um that you are saying because i think uh, we have got used to seeing them uh, throughout our lives uh, but okay. the moment you you get the opportunity to let's say work for uh, for an organization after your education for some time Uh, in a developed country you will find lot of mm-hmm. things which are quite normal i mean uh, the the uh, the public uh, transportation working on time everything clean mm-hmm. roads are clean people are not loitering around people are not uh, you know spitting on the road uh, these things become normal to you i think if you spend some time there you will find that as normal and when you come back you feel that uh, uh, obviously the stray dogs and the cows uh, probably they have a better place rather than being on the road uh, so okay. while i'm not i'm not trying to say that uh, what is wrong or right what i'm trying only say no. that our environment actually makes us to think that what is uh, okay and what is not okay uh, so okay. It, it is just and I, i think all young people like you have to get exposed to uh, different parts of the world so that you can actually bring back the best of the world to india and make india a much better place okay sir so sir now i would like to ask you about what motivated you to write a book on parenting why not any other topic yeah so in the last uh, about 3 years uh, since i took up uh, my entrepreneurship uh, in different areas Uh, mm. i started interacting with lot of students parents teachers uh, and mentors also um, during these interactions i found out that uh, there is uh, there is a need for such a book where uh, we are able to express uh, these ideas uh, to to the young children and to their parents and specifically okay. why i am targeting the parents because if i directly speak to a a uh, 10 year old or a 8 year old child today he or she may not be able to understand all the concepts very well but yes, if i am able to explain the concepts to the young parents and they in okay. turn are able to uh, model some of these ideas at home then mm. there is a possibility that those ideas and those habits will be inculcated by the young children in due course of time uh, habit okay. building doesn't happen in one day habit building takes mm. many many years and typically that has to happen at home home is the best place to start learning the right things and which is why the yes. uh, the, the book has been written based on the ideas uh, which are if you look at the book it is uh, segregated into three different categories the first three four chapters are related to habit building Uh, mm. the fourth chapter is talking about money which most of the education formal education system don't even teach us even in uh, uh, higher education in universities we don't learn what is the value of money so uh, okay. one chapter is dedicated towards the value of money and why it is important and other mm. chapters are related to the various global trends and one chapter is dedicated towards the 21st century skills 
uh, which can be started, uh, which can be learned at home and things like that. So the, uh, the whole purpose okay. was to reach out to more and more uh, parents who can actually become as better human being, better models for their own children. And, and through that, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, much better prepared younger generation for the future mm. of India. So I think this book will help the parents, like the new parents, especially the new couples which are going to have their first baby. Okay. Absolutely. So, sir, I would like to know that how do you view the growing generational gap between the parents and the children? Like nowadays, children don't listen to parents or they have a very weird attitude towards their parents. So what would you like to, what are you your views on it? See, this is something called the generation gap uh, and generation gap is nothing new. It has been always there and it will continue mm. to be there in the future also. Now, yes, to understand this co concept, I don't know how many of your listeners understand uh, uh, the, the different generations which have been defined um, mm. uh, in, the, in the academics. Uh, but broadly, to, just to tell you, you know, in, di in different times in the history there are uh, different generations and starting with the first generation which has been academically recorded is called the silent generation which were the people who were born before 1945 okay then came the baby boomer boomers um, yes. why they are called baby boomers because uh, just after the world war ii got over that was a relative mm. peace period and during that time, there was a rapid growth in uh, in 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 growth of uh, more children getting born. And then, um, people mm -hmm. were not busy. People were not getting killed by the war. So that's why the the phase between 1946 to 1964 is called the baby boomer. Then mm -hmm. uh, the next phase is called Gen X, which is 1965 to 1976, and then yes. came Gen Y or Gen Millenniums. They call it. They call it Gen Millenniums, uh, which is 1977 to 1995. And Gen G is from 1996 to 2011. And the present generation is uh, from 2012 to the present times. Yes, now, sir. why there is a gap? The reason for this different gaps is because every generation when we are born, we are born in a earth or a, in an era which is very different from the next generation. Uh, yes, I mean, sir. take example of, uh, uh, take example of, let's say, let us, to understand this, let's uh, understand the concept of Facebook. Now, when mm. I, uh, when I started growing, I mean, I, I was born, I was the Gen X, part of the Gen X. When I was yes, growing, sir. obviously, I didn't have, I didn't know what is Facebook. Now, the concept yes, of Facebook came when, around 2004. Okay. Mm. Okay, so the, the concept of Facebook, Instagram, all these things have come only in the uh, 2000 era. In, in, in 21st century. Yes, okay. sir. Hmm. Now, obviously, those people who are born in this 21st century, whether it is Gen Z or Gen X, they know more about uh, the Facebook, Instagram and others compared to hmm. the time what I learned during my uh, period, right, as a child. Hmm. So obviously, there will be always a gap between the people who are born now and people who are born during my time. But yes, what sir. can be done is that as uh, as I am learning with every mm. uh, passing year, everyone has to start learning about the new things uh, in every generation. Mm. Okay, And that is the only way that we can actually bridge the gap between the past generation to the future, future generation. Okay. Oh. And uh, after the Gen Alpha, the, obviously there will be some Gen Beta and I don't know what uh, we'll continue to have. Okay. Yes. So the sir. only thing is that we have to keep learning new things and keep adapting. And that is how we can actually bridge the gap. So getting exposure to the present generation is the most important for, especially for the parents. Absolutely. To learn that. And be open and adaptive. Be open yes. and adapting to what is happening now. And hmm. be willing to uh, change as per times. Grab things and enhance yourself according to the times. Absolutely. Okay, so sir, I would like to know in what ways does parenting differs when raising multiple children 
and are the strategies to navigate these challenges and what are the strat strategies to navigate these challenges see uh, uh, whether it is multiple children or uh, or one or two children the mm. in the current times the parenting uh, uh, is something which is um, uh, which is something evolving because of the way things are actually changing in this world Uh, yes, the rapid changes with respect to technology the rapid changes with respect to the geopolitical and the rapid changes with respect to uh, the socio economic situation all that is actually impacting our lives hmm. so um, of course i would first of all argue that um, in india itself if you look at it uh, the reproduction rate today in india is about 2.1 which means that every young uh, young uh, parents i mean couples they are uh, at max having two children at max yes, most sir. of them have actually single children and few exceptions are there where they have more than two children so on an yes. average the rate is about 2.15 right now in india so obviously the people have ex uh, accepted the fact that it is very expensive Uh, to raise multiple number of children in india so most Jee, of sir. them stick to just one or two children and mm. uh, whether it is one child or two children or three children the uh, adaptability has to be same it is not going to be different of course if you have more than one child at home mm. uh, the advantage of that is that two children when they are growing together the socio economic the uh, cognitive development which is the cognitive uh, skills which are which comes only when you are growing together in a, as part of siblings then that actually that actually develops faster than compared to a single child so that is yes. definitely one advantage but apart from that all other factors are very very similar for any parent whether it is a single child or for a multiple number of children and whether it is somebody is in a city or in any rural location uh, parenting mm. today require adaptability to know about what is happening in the world and accordingly take uh, charge and be proactive because uh, uh, the rate of change or the what is going to change is not in our control what we can adapt yes. is in our control Yes, so I think that will also shape the future for their stu- uh, children, exactly. because the thing parents will learn will only be forwarded to the children. Absolutely. So, so sir, how do you intend to navigate the influence of technology on parenting in the modern era? Okay, so uh, when you talk about technology, I feel you are. probably asking me about uh, the socio the uh, technology with respect to the social uh, networks uh, and yes, other things and primary social digital, media yes sir yeah, digital platforms social media digital medias. platforms and probably the high tech mobile phones and all the connected devices yes. at home yes, so uh, in my view technology is something which is actually is part of our lives today mm. right we have to live with it we have to learn how to live with this technology we cannot avoid it yes sir okay what is most important is that we should uh, we should keep in mind is that technology should be used as as something which is a strength for us and we should not become a slave to the technology yes sir now how do we how do we do that my simple suggestion would be that i know i mean it is it may sound very radical to many many of the young parents and to probably to you as well probably but to the extent possible if you can reduce to share personal information on mm. social platform yes sir especially things like uh, uh, facebook and instagram um huh. any reduction of in- information sharing on pl- personal platforms is actually going to be a big benefit for you because all these information whatever you are sharing especially your personal yes, information 
uh, whether it is what you're eating or where you're eating, what you're wearing, or who are your friends and and so on and so forth. These are the crucial information which the social technology platforms are gathering continuously, and they will use it for their benefit. It is yes, not sir. going to benefit you. Okay. Hmm. To large to a large extent, if you can reduce using that social platform, it is good. Um, of course, I am not saying that you should actually totally withdraw from the social platform. You have to use social platforms because that's where a lot of people are also there. So, with respect hmm. to business, probably you will continue <clears throat> to use. But to the extent possible, try to reduce using these social platforms for using or sharing personal information because that's going to be dangerous for you. We do not yes. know what is the future of AI. What hmm. AI can do in the years <clears throat> to come, we do not know. So, to hmm. that extent, please be aware of this and try to be careful about it. And uh, okay. and and uh, at the same time, can you have to also start learning about AI because AI is part of our lives today. Um, yes, sir. How to use the AI? You can actually take up different types of online courses which are available. And I would strongly recommend you should actually try and do that at least once in a year. Take up some new skills with respect to AI to learn. Mm. And if you are not very conversant with uh, learning online, then probably read books or maybe take up uh, support from experts. But uh, yes, adapting sir. and learning new things <clears throat> is very, very mandatory. Otherwise, uh, it will become very, very difficult for you to uh, live in a uh, world which is constantly evolving, constantly adapting to new, new technologies. Yes, <clears throat> okay. I hope uh, I hope I have been able to explain this clearly. Yes, sir. I think this is one of the most important part which both the parents and the students need to learn because yeah. sharing personal information is very critical on these platforms. Exactly. And I, and I agree with you what you said. So, sir, not, this how... is something which is not theoretical. Actually, I have done it myself. I used to have personal accounts on Facebook and Instagram. I have yes, deleted sir. them. I think it is necessary because people share too much of their personal life and they start showing off on social media that we went here, we went there. Yeah. And that becomes like in future, it can act as a barrier to yourself. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, sir, how do you perceive the role of traditional education systems in preparing young students for future professional success? Unfortunately, it's very limited. Um, uh, to understand this, I think well, let's understand how the status of higher education is in India is. Uh, okay. You know, Yashashvi, uh, children like you, for example, every year 4.15 crore students like you join the higher education every year in India. 4.15 yes, crore. Sir. You are yes, one among them. Okay? Yes, sir. And you know how many of them pass out of this system every year? Hardly one or two, I think. One or yeah. two crore. One crore. Only one crore pass out of the system every year. So, four crore are getting inside the system and one crore is coming out of the system. So, yes, I don't know what is happening to the balance three crore. Maybe they are dropping off or they are not completing the education. I don't know. Yes. There are no official data to prove it. But this data is available uh, on on uh, public forum. So, that's why I'm quoting these data. And okay. those one crore people who are, who are coming out of the higher education system, is there a formal job for everybody? The answer is no. No. Hmm. Formal job sector in India is uh, hardly contributing or is able to cater to only 5% of people who are in the age category of 18 to 60. So, who are employable? Basically, anybody who is a, any person in India who is in the age category of 18 to 60 is an hmm. employable person, right? Yes, and sir. And that person has to be doing something, either formally yes, or sir. informally. Yes, sir. So, as per the data available, <clears throat> currently in India, only 5% of the such people are working in a formal job sector. Okay. Okay. Five percent का मतलब क्या हुआ कि 
uh, those uh, jobs where there is a salary there is a tier there is a gratuity there are leave policies mm. and it's a proper organization where where there are group guidelines are followed yes exactly. sir so that is a formal job sector that is yes, only sir. 5% Okay. and balance 95% of the people are still working in informal jobs hmm. okay and out of the biggest contributor is actually agriculture agriculture is still one of the largest contributor sectors of, uh, in india in india yes. for uh, employment but unfortunately yes. it is all informal why it is hmm. called informal because it is not a salary you are paid hmm. on a daily basis there is no yes. pf there is no gratuity there is no insurance nothing even no, there is no job secu- security no, over there no 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 job security hmm okay so that is the state of indian uh, professional uh, work system society yeah hmm. so uh, are the education system doing something about it i think they are making some attempt i think the new education policy or national education policy the nep 2020 nep 20 uh, yeah which 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 is a step in that direction where skill development and so and so forth are a lot of focus uh, in these policies but mm. the implementation in a country like india will take many many years so on the ground for to really see the impact of this is going to see a lot of years Uh, but a step has ta- has been taken in the direction uh, but it it is still a, i would say uh, it's going to take many years before we we can we can really see that uh, formal job sector growing big time in india mm. so unfortunately this is the situation i do not have a great positive answer for this yes sir so i think this is what the reality of indian society is there is ki they want their stu- children to pass out with a very good success but then job opportunities are not there for them absolutely like, many of the reality. parents yes sir many of the parents want that their children should be doctors and engineers but there are no specific job opportunities for those percentage of doctors and engineers uh, let me since you talked about doctors and engineers let me give some numbers okay in yes, india sir. in india about between 15 to 17 lakh students appear for mbbs exam every year yes sir and you know how many seats are there i think around just thousands it's in thousands only uh, less than 1 lakh it's a, it's oh. about close to about 90000 ha uh-huh. okay so okay sir where is 15 17 lakh children appearing for mbbs and where are the number of seats so hmm. let us assume that including dental and everything put together uh, approximately 1 lakh children get into you know the field of medical medicine. fields medical yes field. sir what happens to the balance 16 17 15 to 16 lakh children being in depression and dropping out from their lives yeah of course i mean they take up some alternative course and things like that but imagine the kind of trauma if you do not get into a mbbs uh, stream if yes. you if you are aspiring and your parents are aspiring for it hmm. okay this story for engineering is also no different okay hmm. yes, in sir. india um, uh, roughly about 10 lakh children 8 to 10 lakh children are passing out of engineering uh, education system every year and hmm. only 50% of them actually get into a formal job absolutely sir yes rest of the 50% engineers do not have a job also hmm do not have a job probably not in the engineering sector yes they work in different sectors to just have a living yes so four years of engineering and lakhs of rupees uh, spent on engineering and hmm. you uh, end up doing something else okay so this is the uh, sad part but yeah i mean uh, of course there are there are good things also as not that everything is bad but uh, in india if you have to i mean as young people like you i think i must tell you mm. that suppose you want to become uh, the best uh, in in your cohort i mean in your cohort there will be around 4 mm. crore children 
and when i say your cohort you're born probably in the year about uh, which year are you born 2006 sir you are born in 2006 right so yes, uh, children born between 2002 to 2006 is a, approximately 4 crore okay mm. so you are amongst them yes sir okay so Surely. if you want to succeed in your life in a professional career then you mm. have to become the top 1 or 2% of the, that 4 crore actually sir that is the kind of competition we have in india right now Mm. So whichever so field, much. whichever field, whether it is the uh, engineering or medicine or or journalism or entertainment, any field you choose, if you want to be the best in India, then you have to be in that top one or two percent. Actually, sir. And so, what were, Mala? What would you like to say about those upcoming fields like uh, hospitality? Then. graphic designing fashion designing even journalism for that matter it's also mass communication actually i should say okay the good part is that uh, the opportunities in every field is abundant yes. that is the good part and i will explain you how um in india i mean india fortunately is the largest country with respect to population we have over yes, sir. china so we are about 1.42 billion or around hmm. 142 crore people right now yes sir and uh, probably by 2050 or 2060 will become around 1.6 crore uh, i mean uh, 1.6 billion or 1.7 billion and by that time world Sorry, population sir. also will become also currently world population is around 8 billion and uh, by 2050 it will be around 9 billion or 9.5 billion okay hmm for sure um, so which means that the basic requirement human requirement of anyone is going to be mm. growing whether it is food or education or uh, entertainment or medicine or housing clothing any basic requirement of human being will actually grow yes sir so which means that any field you take up as a youngster mm. whether it is in india or outside india the opportunities are enormous surely because, sir because the population is growing so much opportunities mm. are there in every field mm. okay the only yes, thing sir. is you have to be the best in that particular field mm. so basically it's on your skills that you will get an opportunity to work in yes. any of the field you want and opportunities are there in any field just that you have to be best in your skills and you have to take up something which is in line with your ability your strength your personality mm-hmm. and which is something which you like to do every day then you will definitely yes, succeed sir. anything you do and i think parents are also trying to understand that only not only doctor and engineers at points different fields also work better than those absolutely and that's the whole purpose of this mm-hmm. book actually the okay. purpose of this book is to explain that opportunities are there in every field yes sir so sir how do you believe the insight and activities presented in your book can be practically implemented by both young and uh, young parents and professionals in daily life okay so uh, the book whatever concepts i have explained in the yes, book sir. are something which i have actually done it myself okay and i have made sure that my children at home i have got two teenage children at home yes sir they also have adopted some of it my wife uh, is also somebody who has adopted some of it it is not something which i have just theoretically written for the purpose of writing a book these are the practical things which have been explained and which is something which i have myself done it Mm. okay and i have seen my own children and my own um uh, mentees who, who whom i have mentored over the years oh. even they yes, have sir. adopted and some of the parents who have read my book um, they have gone uh, given excellent feedback about what they think about the book yes, sir. Uh, so it is all doable it is practical it is doable it is just that the parents have to make an intent 
they hmm. initially when you try something new it, you will find that always it is difficult yes sir but if you have to create a new habit you have to start you have small, to practice it you have to start every day. small start yes. small and practice every day then definitely over a period of time you can achieve it. yes so sir can i ask your personal parenting experience like i think it will motivate parents to read your book yeah so uh, personally uh, uh, when i when i uh, talk about both my children in fact uh, yes sir both go uh, i got a son and a daughter son is in, in he just completed his 12th grade um uh, and like any other parents when you passed out uh, in the 10th grade with about 93% we were also tempted to send him for a you know typical engineering um, you know coaching class and things like that mm-hmm. Yes. But what we have allowed our children to do at home is to be able to think and do things on their own and express themselves. And yes. Because sir. of that, he took a decision saying that no, I uh, I want to pursue my own uh, passion, which is basically into graphic design and and things like mm. that. He himself is a, a good artist, uh, has won lot of okay. state, national, and international awards. um okay, and he has taught at global arts uh, uh, the institutions many of the south indian uh, uh, people will know about global art i don't know how much how much of it is actually there in north so yes he took a decision and he during that break between 10th grade to 11th grade he took a decision saying that no i i want to pursue my uh, 11th 12th in humanities and mm. we we actually let him do that so he did okay, uh, two years of humanities and uh, he has appeared now for nift and uh, other competitive exams and some of it is uh, he has cleared uh, some of the levels we are expecting results soon and hopefully uh, he will get into a professional career which is as per his strength uh, yes okay. and uh, so this is something which practically as parents with uh, myself and my wife we have done that with our children and our second child is a daughter uh, who has just got into the 12th grade now and uh, she is a okay. professional kathak dran- dancer uh, for the cool. last 10 years uh, she has learned kathak and she okay. has performed in many uh, national and uh, international stages and um, she has liking for english language hopefully she will take up something uh, a combination of uh, pursuing arts which is basically pursuing her kathak uh, as a profession mm. and also parallelly probably pursue english as a literature and maybe journalism or something uh, 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 this is a phase where she is actually making her own decision uh, she is okay. in the 12th grade now so we are letting mm. her to decide what to do so, okay, so this sir. is how both our children have uh, been Uh, growing in their into their adulthood i would say and uh, it is doable i mean i myself uh, uh, i am a mechanical engineer by the profession okay uh, sir and a, and a, a management graduate and and after that i have done my phd so i can easily got influence and and I would have force both my children to take up engineering which i i registered mm. doing yes sir okay and it is doable and there are opportunities in nt area so my sincere request to anyone who is who is listening to this conversation or are able to see our conversation i would request uh, think about it think about your child not from your dream but from the dream of the child imagine yes, imagine imagine your child to 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 do something which will make him or her happy for next 40 50 years because mm. the education is only for about 20 22 22 23 23 years then rest of the 40 50 years are the professional career imagine yes, if they have to be happy remain happy for 40 50 years after education mm. so what is important the you know, the dream of the parents are important or the 50 years of child life is more important 
So, sir, I can relate with you very well because even my parents allowed me to pursue the career which I wanted. Like, uh, and I am pursuing in a music degree in since eleven, like classical Fantastic. music. Yes, Fantastic. sir. And uh, with that, I did my eleventh and twelfth in humanities. So everyone in the family was like, she has to give UPSC. But then my parents were like, it's her choice whether she wants to or not. And mm. on a serious note, I am not at all interested. But they are like, Ki you should try it once because it will help you in your future. But then I am resisting it because I am not interested. I want my career in either journalism or in music field or audio industries. So they support me also. And at points, they guide me well. That which is the best way. Like my best supporter is my mother. She She's always there as my backhand and support. She always gives me. So I think that this should help the parents. Like the ones which are very typical with their mindset that no, our child should go in doctory or engineering only. Or the third option nowadays is UPSC. Like they should get to know that there are various fields and it has to be according to the child what they want to do. Absolutely. I think this conversation will really be helpful for them. I hope so, it reaches out to all the all the uh, target audience. And hopefully, yes, some sir. of them some of them are able to make the right kind of choice in their life. And if that is possible, then I'll be really glad and happy that this conversation has taken place today. Yes, sir. So. Now, moving towards the end, I would like, lastly, I would like to ask you that as a career counselor and a parenting counselor both, what would you like to suggest to the upcoming parents and the students both for their career and better future? So, I think uh, uh, just to summarize whatever I've spoken so, so far, um, especially to the parents, uh, I would suggest if you, if you had young children at home, um please make sure that you are becoming a good model at home i mean when i say yes. model at home matlab typically modeling ka nahi baat kar raha hu main what i am trying to say is that role are, models role model yes are you a yes. role model for your child whatever behavior you have the yes, same sir. behavior will be copied by the child mm. um in every aspect the way you yes, see sir. the way you treat others the way you um, uh, no, do anything, okay? Mm. Anything which you do is actually getting copied by your child. Okay? Actually, of course, sir. I'm not saying that the children don't copy others. They, of course, copy others also. They copy their friends. They, they copy other things at school as well. But yes, you sir. as parents have a very, very important role to try and see as much as possible to become a good role model. And to that to that extent, um, parenting is not something which is going to be easy. It is a it is a responsibility uh, on the parents uh, to to do that. Sometimes you have yes, to sacrifice sir. your happiness uh, for the sake of children. Uh, yes, sir. I think our parents have done it. I'm sure the future parents also will do it. Uh, so this is something which I would simply <laughs> say that. Uh, to do that and uh, as far as the future career for your child please imagine do you want yes, to sir. see your child to be happy for the 40 50 years of their professional career or not yes sir. answer that question if you get the right answer then accordingly you will do right things for your child okay and uh, to the children um, I know different age group children probably are going to see this or hear this conversation. Mm. Uh, yes. Sir. Since it is part of the university, I think a lot of young children like you also will be listening to this. Yes, sir. Um, surely. Um, so some of you probably are not sure as to what to do. Don't worry. If you imagine the professional career is going to be for 40-50 years. Uh -huh. in, the, in the horizon of 40-50 years, if you are not able to understand what to do in the next two, three years, it is absolutely mm -hmm. fine. Okay, sir. Explore different things. Experiment different things. And if required, even if you fail also in your experiment, it is absolutely fine. The okay, initial sir. failures in your career is not a failure. It is a learning for you. 
so the fail as it stands no first attempt in learning so oh, exactly exactly yes sir so be open and uh, and uh, learn to uh, embrace failure if you are able to yes sir if you are happy and um, you, uh, are okay to embrace failure then uh, then obviously there is lot which can happen keep your yes sir keep yourself open to new ideas all the time yes surely Because sir what is going to be the future of work we do not know most hmm. of the most of the jobs of 2030 have not been discovered even today yes sir okay so be open and it is okay if you fail initially for some time hmm so sir i hope this conversation will be helpful for everyone around us and thank you so much sir for joining us today like i think this will help both the students and the parents and even the upcoming generations to come thank you so much sir for uh, being here today thank, thank you thank you thank you for hosting me and it, it was nice talking to you yashashvi and i wish you uh, a lot of happiness and success in your future career thank you so much thank you so much sir